Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, citizens of all ages, welcome to a special, I guess you'd call it maybe a report, um, update, uh, suggestion. Welcome to another video of Star Citizen related shenanigans. Let's go with that one. So, I thought, uh, for the sake of the upcoming anniversary sale, um, I would go over the days and which ships are going to be available and which ships of that particular manufacturer I think are the best, uh, I guess, bang for your buck. So, uh, the first day in the anniversary sale, the uh, 24th, is going to be Anvil. So, let's jump on over to here, go to the ships, and look at Anvil. Now, first and foremost, there's the uh, well, in this case, the Hornet. Uh, we're not going to be showcasing the Hornet, as this is almost always, if not permanently, available. The Terrapin. Now, uh, the Terrapin, um, I can't necessarily suggest outright, as I haven't had my hands on it. I only know a little bit about it. But going into the Terrapin in and of itself, it says... Presenting the Anvil Aerospace U4A-3 Terrapin class scanning slash exploration ship. The Terrapin was developed near the end of the 28th century to serve as the first ship in the Empire's defensive restructuring of the Navy. The Terrapin's watchword is protection. With extensive shield systems and armor layers designed to provide maximum possible defense for pilot and crew, while it lacks the maneuverability of a dedicated fighter, it does maintain an advanced, hard-hitting array of weapons intended to keep the most fearsome Vanduul Raider at bay. Now, what does that translate to? As you can see from the picture that they decided to use, this is a defensive ship. Uh, it's, it's going to have thick armor, it's going to have decent shields, and it's going to have good defensive weapons. Now, what does that mean? That means this is not going to be a dogfighter. This is going to be, you know, think of it like an armored personnel car uh, carrier, right? So they're in battle, but they don't go after fights. They don't go looking to engage somebody. If they happen to be engaged, they've got armaments to, you know, propel, uh, or I'm sorry, repel the invading or attacking forces while they can make a getaway. That's going to be along the idea of the Terrapin. Now, it also has scanners. So outside of a militia role, this would also be good for um, teaming up with something like, you know, uh, a freelancer or, you know, um, one of the other exploration ships because it has that scanning on there. So, you know, maybe even a ship that's not necessarily got the, uh, uh, the technology, but maybe it has the comfort. For exploration, you pair it with a terrapin. Well, now you got those scanners, so now you can, you know, potentially take that not as exploration uh, focused ship, pair it with this, and now you can get the best of both worlds as well as have, you know, maybe a buddy tag along or vice versa. You know, maybe if you have a terrapin and your buddy has just um, a Taurus or something like that, well, now you've got the space to store stuff. He's got the space to, or you've got the space to scan. Uh, you know, that could be a great team for exploration if you want to go out and uh, collect things. So I have a Terrapin. I'm very excited to see what it comes out to be. If that falls within the range of things that you're thinking about doing, perhaps think about picking up a Terrapin. So next we have the uh, Hornet Wildfire, which this is classified as a medium fighter. And... It says, created as part of the Masters of Flight series in conjunction with the Flight Sim Arena Commander, the Wildfire pays tribute to famed pilot Aria Riley for her distinguished service with the legendary Squadron 42. This Hornet comes equipped with her own personally selected loadout preferences and a custom special edition livery honoring her iconic ship. Now, first and foremost, if you don't know what livery means, basically that's like the paint job. Uh, when I first saw this, I saw this word used on the Titan Renegade, and when I saw livery, in my mind, that says living space, 
So I thought the interior, like where that singular bed was, was different. So that's what made me buy it. We'll come to find out. No, that's that cool skin that you see on the outside. So just so you know, that's what that means. So when we look at the wildfire, according to these pictures, it looks like it's a Super Hornet variant. Um, I cannot comment on this directly as I do not have a wildfire. But to me, with if it does have that functioning ball turret, then that tells me so. So let's take a look. M4A remote, that might be the canard. And now, see, that says available. Hmm. So it looks like it's got the Mantis weapons on it. I'm still having trouble reading this out. So remote, size 2. So that could be, but it doesn't say that it's a balter. It does say remote. Remote, let's see. What does the... Well, we'll come back to that, because if this does have a um, the ball turret, then I would basically say this seems like it would be a Super Hornet, um, just possibly with a different skin, um, but I can't comment as to whether or not this has the same tanky uh, abilities as the Super Hornet. <laughs> so next up is the Hurricane. Now, the Hurricane is also still in production. Oh, uh, the Wildfire is flyable, from my understanding. Terrapin is not flyable. Uh, Hurricane is not flyable yet, but it is still in production. Uh, seems like they're very, very close to having it done. So, Hurricane, which is a heavy fighter. Big things do come in small packages. The Hurricane is a fighting spacecraft that packs a deadly punch into a slight fuselage. The, space, uh, la, the spacecraft compensates for its lack of creature comforts for its powerful armament. Six guns capable of blasting their way through nearly anything. Hurricane pilots have yet to find an enemy shield they can't knock down. So, Hurricane. This looks like it's um, basically a souped-up version of the Super Hornet. Uh, it looks as though it's got sort of that uh, ball turret that the Super Hornet would have. Uh, it's not a ball. It is actually just a turret. Uh, UEE designation. Now, if those are those size four combines, and they kept their kept those on there, I'm going to be very happy when the hurricane comes out. I have a, a hurricane. What was it? Tur tortoise and the hurricane package, which was the terrapin and the hurricane package together, which uh, goes to show that that would also be a good pairing. You know, you've got this uh, to run security escort while the you're out in your terrapin doing your scanning or search and rescue, uh, you know, what have you. Here's some more little artwork of it. thing is pretty. Like, again, those look like combines, and those actually kind of look like mini combines, but they haven't created those if those are planned. And it looks like through the hurricane turret, they're looking on maybe a Vandal driller or kingship. And one of my favorite ones. See, again, now... If those are all size 4 combines, yippee ki yay motherfucker. Because that will be a deadly bastard. Alright, so let's see. Let's see what it says for weapons. Tarantulas. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's got four tarantulas. Ooh, okay. Plus... Am I reading... Wow. Uh, so they're size threes. There's four on a mount. So there would be four other size threes. Okay. That actually sounds like it's packing quite a punch. Could we say it's punching above its weight limit? I don't know. It's a heavy fighter. <laughs> so the Hurricane, I mean, it's just that. It is a heavy fighter. It This thing seems uh, it's got a ballistic loadout, and it is there to just tear through targets. Um, now, from my understanding, though, this is not as durable as a Super Hornet. So don't think that this is like the be-all, end-all of fighters. Um, this does have its weak points as well. Um, now, again, we don't have this in hand. I haven't flown it personally, so it's a little hard. You know, this is all speculation as of right now. However, what's not speculation is the part that I just said about the Hornet thing. Uh, there was a Jump Point article 
came out not too, too long ago that was detailing uh, the hurricane and basically said um, that it wasn't as tough as a super hornet. So you have to be of a different mindset when flying and fighting with the hurricane. Oh, my, one of my favorite anvil ships here, which I think uh, a lot of people can say as well, the Carrick. The Anvil Carrick features reinforced fuel tanks for long-duration flight, an advanced jump drive, and a dedicated computer core for jump charting operations. Originally a military exclusive, the Carrick is now available for civilian use. Onboard accommodations include crew medical and repair facilities, and a mapping-oriented sensor suite. Now the Carrick. This is like top-of-the-line exploration vehicle. Uh, the Carrick was a military vehicle at first. Uh, it's been it's since been released to the population, uh, the civilian population. And this is by far one of my favorite ships. Um, I absolutely love it. Uh, it does have it comes with a rover as well. Um, and I think it's coming with a custom one. I'm not 100% sure if they've commented any further yet. Um, their work, supposedly the Carrick is hopefully in production as we speak. Uh, it, it, from my understanding, it went on to production about a month early as compared to what it said on the schedule report it was going to do. So cross your fingers that that's good news that we will see it sooner than later because this one I am waiting for. Um, it's got a double-decker bridge, as you can see here. Uh, the mapping suite, I believe, is uh, up here. I think this is the table right here where you're going to have like a nice, cool, big 3D map. Uh, in fact, speaking of, here it is. I can't wait to see shit like this. Uh, this is the ship that I'm waiting for. You know, this is like my Firefly-class ship, you know, in my opinion. This is going to be my Serenity. If I can't, I'm going to name it Serenity. I really am. Um, and I mean just, ah, oh, look how beautiful. This thing is going to be where it's at. Yeah, uh, and then you can see the anvil insignia on the ground there. Again, this was a military ship, uh, but it's out for civilian consumption. And the cool thing is this is going to have a retracting metal canopy that goes over the windscreen there to give protection for, like, micrometeorites and stuff. It's going to be 123 meters. Yeah, 123 meters long, 25 meters about, uh, you know, for the internal width. And by that, I mean the actual width of the ship itself, not counting the wingspan. It does have a hangar on the top for possibly something about the Gladius size, which that's not too bad. Or, uh, in fact, that may be where the snub is going to go. Hopefully it's of decent size and decent use. Front view here. And then here's that canopy uh, I was just talking about. So this is the regular glass. And then it kind of slides down like a garage door. Now this one, still not a lot known about it. Um, it's going to have some man turrets. It's going to have probably some remote turrets. Yep. Uh, this right here is the end game, if you want to call it, explorer ship. Like, this is what you are going to chase after if you're an explorer. Uh, starting out with this out the gate is probably going to net you some advantages and some net costs. Um, you're not going to want to fly this solo. You'll be able to, but you're not going to be as effective, especially just with the uh, size of this thing. Um, but again, also depending on weapon, weapons that it comes with, um, this has scanner modules, computers, all that good stuff. Um, this is the ship, in my opinion, if you want to be like top of the line explorer. I've got mine. I will have it whenever it comes out. This one, oh, I'm stoked for. <laughs> Um, last time it was sold, it was $350. Uh, so that's a big chunk. You know, if you're not comfortable uh, pledging that, that's no problem. Uh, you know, you'll be able to uh, get it in game. Hopefully, around 3.1, you'll be able to rent ships. Uh, so rest assured, you're not missing out completely. <clears throat> uh, so there's the Hornet Ghost, but that's available year round. Hornet Tracker, also year round. Super Hornet. So, the closest to the military loadout as is legally possible for a civilian model, the F7CM Super Hornet retracts the ball turret, reattaches the ball turret, 
and offers near mill spec parts under the hood. Proving that two heads are better than one, a second seat has been added to split the logistic and combat duty, making the Super Hornet a truly terrifying mark to engage. Now, that's debatable. Um, I've had people in my Super Hornet manning the turret, and in all honesty, I just I felt more neutered than anything. Um, not having somebody in that turret and having control over it, I think makes me more combat effective. Uh, the Super Hornet also has a buff to it. I think it's something like a 15 or 20 percent, something to that effect. I, I don't remember where I saw that, um, but I know that this is definitely a tankier version than the base F7C um, regular Hornet. The Super Hornet, as the description says, is basically like a step down from the military version. Um, and it is badass. For a fighter, this is basically the gold standard. Um, this is also one of the earlier ships um, in Star Citizen. I believe the F-7A, the actual military Hornet, was the first ship crafted and used all the way back, right around and before the Kickstarter even. So this is like, you know, really owning this is also kind of owning a part of history because this is almost where you could say it kind of like spawned from. Uh, and again, the amount of guns this, that this thing has, it, it's, it's beautiful. With this being the Super Hornet, um, it actually comes with a nose canard that you're not seeing here, but you're able to, if you put that on the size 3 that's in the front, you can split that up into, su into two size 1s. So you've got two size two badgers. I believe it comes stock two size two badgers on the wing as well. And then uh, I don't remember what comes on the nose, but you can put the canard on. And if you put on bulldogs, take these off, put on panthers, and have all these static. Uh, I'm sorry, just yeah, static and just forward facing. You can put a hell of a lot of damage down. You'll be taking things out very very quickly, especially if you fly non gimbaled. If you fly with your weapon straight, uh, forward-facing, static, whatever you want to call it, like if you're playing with um, uh, HOTAS or something like that where you, you don't use gimbal, that is going to be the one for you because you are going to put down so much hurt downrange. I mean, this thing, again, in my opinion, is like the gold standard for fighters. Um, the Super Hornet usually goes for about 180 uh, with this year, you're going to get, I believe, 60 months. That's six zero, 60 months of insurance due to the year. Um, uh, due to it being the fifth year, fifth anniversary, um, they do it, uh, it. It goes by the amount of years, so you are, in effect, getting five years insurance on any ship that you buy during this anniversary sale. Uh, and that is a hell of a long time. So really more or less getting lifetime insurance. I mean, five years? Jesus. So, um, they, I, I believe they are not selling the F7A, so I believe we can skip right over that one. Now we're coming up to one of my favorite bombers, the Gladiator. So, the civilian model of the Gladiator appeals to those who want to explore the verse with a bit of added security. Supporting a maximum of two, the Gladiator is perfectly equipped to explore and fight with or without a wingman. The civilian model allows pilots to choose between an extra cargo hold or a bomb bay. Now, that last part, if that's the case, it has not been implemented yet. Uh, the Gladiator is basically uh, a Super Hornet-esque bomber. So by that, I mean really just more so aesthetically, and that it has a somewhat of a turret, somewhat of a ball turret in like the most technical stance. So um, you, this is a two-seater, so much like the Super Hornet, you can have somebody else in there and they would be manning this turret. However, again, in my opinion, much like the Super Hornet, you're more effective when you have control of that in conjunction with the wing weapons. Uh, this also sports, I want to say it's is it two or four size five torpedoes. Um, so you've got yourself a nice little miniature 
uh, carrier bomber or something like that. Uh, you've got two, I think they're size twos, I think there's actually, no, I think they're size ones. You've got two size ones on the turret, and then two size threes on the wing. So one on each wing, plus you've got some missiles and torpedoes. So this thing is a perfect little bomber. Um, I felt that I absolutely needed one of these. Uh, this was the first bomber that I own, and it's my favorite. Um... It's just, it's great. It's a perfect little pocket bomber, you know? Um, that is concept weaponry. That does not come with that, to my recollection. Now, you've got some of these missiles on there, which I believe are IR. I don't remember. I'm not going to go into much explanation of those, because I'm more than likely wrong. So, yeah, on the top, you come, you come with two. Oh, actually, it says Badger. Were they Badgers? Now I'm second-guessing myself. I haven't flown it in a long while, so apologies. I'm going to check the stats in two seconds. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, no, this is definitely one of the nicer bombers, in my opinion. Um, having the size 5 torpedoes makes it a hell of a uh, fighter, a bomber, in the face of the larger craft. So for the weapons... So it does, I lied. It does have M4A laser cannons on the wings. So yeah, it's because it's size 2, but it has a max size of 3. And you've got two of them. Uh, now on the turret, <clears throat> size 2. Uh, si so is it Badgers? Really? I thought they were Bulldogs. I'll have to, unless this is changed. Because I could have swore I had to put Bulldogs on mine, but if they're Badgers, I'll have to go back and double check. And as we go over here, missile size, 5. So you've got the uh, ASM-20 Stalker um, torpedoes, and those things pack a punch. And you've got four of them. So you've got four size 5 torpedoes. Those things, like I said, they are beautiful. Rounding out the anvil list... The Crucible. A so-called flying toolbox, the Crucible is Anvil, Aeros Anvil Aerospace's first dedicated repair ship. Featuring a rotating control bridge and a detachable pressurized workspace, the Crucible is a versatile mobile garage equipped with repair arms, a drone operations center, and all the equipment needed to overhaul a damaged craft back into the fighting shape. So the Crucible is basically a flying repair shop. Um, which can be invaluable in the right hands. Now, as you can see from some of the concept art, it actually looks as though you'll be able to go up to larger ships that don't fit in your bay and be able to repair them uh, externally. Uh, here's a picture of the, um, the internals, almost, you can say, uh, it looks like there's two or three decks in there. There's the bridge. Here's one with the uh, pressurized garage, if you if you will. Uh, so you'll be able to fly in. It looks like at least uh, Hornet-sized ships in the uh, garage itself to repair, uh, and you'd probably be able to make a good amount of money doing that. You know, flying around. Um, just aimlessly even, just saying, hey, anybody need some work? Anybody need some repairs? You could probably get a slew of customers just by flying around the areas that you know are a little bit more dangerous. You know, like being just on the, the outskirts of the, you know, areas where there's a lot of wars or something. You'd be able to, I mean, this could be a huge money maker, especially if you get your marketing down. So it looks like this is what the ship is. Um, just itself, and this is the ship, it's really kind of hard to see, I know, uh, with that repair garage bay on there. Um, do they have any other better ones? Looks like a captain's chair, maybe. Cockpit seat. Oh, some blueprints, yeah. So that's going to be that, um, uh, like, I guess garage, right? Call it workspace, whatever you want to call it there. Um, and here's a nice little side view. So it's, you know, again, you can hold a Super Hornet, still have a wee bit of space. It looks like you could even fit like an Argo in right behind that. Obviously, you probably wouldn't do it, but just for the sake of size. Um, and the bridge right there looks like it's going to have a decent turret up on there for protection as well. 
um, and this is detachable. It's got the robotic arms on there, so I believe that's what you'll be able to use for doing the repairs on the larger ships uh, that can't dock inside of your hangar. So again, not a whole lot of information on this as it is also still in concept. I've not got my hands on it, so again, it's hard to say specifically. But again, you got to think, once Persistence comes online, which it, which it will, it'll have long been online since before this comes out, people are going to need to repair. And, you know, Cry Astros aren't going to be, you know, all over the place. You, If you want to make money and if you're more of like a mechanic, uh, more interested in doing that kind of job, the Crucible might be something you want to look at. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the Crucible is 325 you know what i completely spaced out and i have not given you the prices of all the ships so i'm going to go back and i'm going to do that all right now so for the terrapin if you wanted a terrapin that would cost you one ninety five so a terrapin uh, with 60 months, that's six zero. Um, that's five years insurance. Be 195. If you wanted a wildfire, let's see, that would be one seventy five. So the Hornet wildfire is with five years insurance is going to be 175. Hurricane, which I just saw, is also going to be 175. Also five years insurance. Carrick, now again, last I knew, I believe it was 350, and it's 350. Uh, again, the Ghost, the Hornet, always on sale. Super Hornet, I believe, is 180. 180. That was correct. The Gladiator, I believe, is 165. 165 for the Gladiator. And the Crucible. Is 350. So if you were looking to get a, a Crucible. It's going to be along the same lines <clears throat> as a Carrick. Um, but again, the amount of money that you could, you know, possibly make with a heavy repair station, flying repair station, one that can go to the customer, one that can just be flying by and someone says, hey, I need help, my wing blew off, my engine shot, my, you know, hull has a dent, can you buff this out? This is the one that you're going to want. Um, and I'm actually kind of starting to get interested in this. I might take a look at the Crucible a little deeper once the, uh, the sale gets a little closer. So uh, I'm going to end the video here. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, kind of look at the upcoming sale and what the prices of everything are going to be in the roles of the ships. Um, if you like this video, leave a like down below. If you want me to continue uh, this series, uh, also let me know as I'm, I'm going to try to do this for each day to correspond so that way you guys have kind of some information to go off of. Um, thank you very much for watching. All you beautiful bastards out there, have a wonderful day. Peace.